So you just bought a brand new home or you have an existing home that you're looking to make smart. Well, I'm in a brand new build that my brother just got and he's looking to build a smart home. He has invited me over to help him to get it all set up from scratch. So I thought, why not bring you guys on the journey along and show you how I will get this all started. When starting a smart home, there are three pillars to consider. Networking, Wi-Fi, security. Over the course of this video, we're gonna be going through installing all these different components and I'll show you guys how I would do it. Let's get started. So I'm in the mechanical room right now. In North America, the mechanical room houses everything from your electrical components to your water, to your heating systems, basically everything that manages the house. So it kind of makes sense to have our networking equipment here as well. So we have centralized control. We're gonna be mounting a network rack right here so we can mount all of our networking equipments like our router, switches, and even servers in here. Let's get started. First thing you wanna do is to find a good spot to mount your rack. For us, we've chosen to mount it right over here. And one reason we decided to do that is because it is close to all of the ethernet cables that the builders ran to the house. We're gonna go ahead, pull out the cables, and route it into the network rack, and then rack all of our network components inside of the rack. Now come with me and let me show you how we're gonna do this. We began by measuring the distance between the studs to see if it would line up with the mounting points on the rack. Unfortunately, it didn't, so we improvised by using a backing board. The backing board provides the needed strength by mounting it on both studs and then mounting the rack to the backing board. Once the backing board was in place, we mounted the rack, ensuring a stable foundation for our network setup. Before diving into the audio installation, we focused on tidying up the existing ethernet cables. I routed all the ethernet cables neatly from the recessed enclosure the builders had put in place into the network rack using the cable management trays on the side of the rack. We decided to skip using a patch panel to save space, daring that many cables to justify using one in this scenario. Next, we installed the UDM Pro, which is the backbone of the network. The UDM Pro combines routing, security, and network management into one device. It has 8 LAN ports but doesn't support PoE, and there's also an SFP Plus port for 10 gig connections. Additionally, it acts as an NVR for the Unify camera system, with the address slot for local storage of security footages. After the UDM Pro, we installed the Unify 24 port PoE switch. This switch provides power and data through a single cable to all PoE devices, which simplifies the setup and reduces cable clutter. It is perfect for powering our wireless access points and security camera. This switch allows us to easily expand our network while keeping everything neatly organized in one central location. By choosing the Unify ecosystem, we ensure seamless integration between our network components, allowing for easy scalability and future expansion as needed. With the 24-port PoE switch and the UDM Pro working together, we've laid a solid foundation for a reliable and secure home network. Now, we're installing the server. My brother is a content creator with lots of video footages, so having a reliable NAS is crucial. The server runs on RAID, which supports using different size drives and is easily scalable. It's configured for four 8TB IronWolf NAS grade drives in a RAID 5 setup, providing a good balance of performance and data protection. It also has an NVMe drive acting as a cache for faster read and write speeds. We set up a 10 gig connection between the UDM Pro and the server using an SFP module in the UDM Pro and a 10 gig NIC in the server. Next, we moved on to the wireless network installation. We used two Unify in-wall wireless access points, one on the top floor on the east end and the other on the west side of the main floor, providing full coverage without too much overlap. 
This was my first time using the eel wall unit and I really love them. They are a great solution for home use, covering up to 1250 square foot theoretically. Though in reality, you probably get about half of that due to various factors. They also have 4 Ethernet ports for hardware connection, with one providing PoE output. Installation was a breeze. We simply converted an existing wall jack in the middle of the room for use with the in wall unit. It's powered by PoE, so the unified 24 port switch powers it, and it supports up to 160 MHz channel and 300 devices. Although that's a little bit optimistic for real world use case though. I wouldn't count on using 300 devices on a single wireless access point. Overall, the Unify in-wall unit proves to be a versatile and reliable solution for home networks, delivering seamless connectivities wherever you need it. We also installed a U6LR that is the Unify long range in the middle of the basement. The basement is currently unfinished and my brother has plans to make it a studio. Stay tuned for a development video on his channel. Link to his channel is down in the bio. Now let's proceed to the security cameras and doorbell installation. During the build, I got my brother to tell the builders to run CAT6 Ethernet cables to the front and back of the house, and another for the doorbell location. Unfortunately, he forgot to mention the one for the doorbell, so we proceeded to install the unified G4 camera at the front and back. I terminated the cables with outdoor rated shielded LJ45 mil connectors. One thing the builders contractors failed to do was to use outdoor rated cables for this exterior run. Although it's not a big deal, I made sure to embed all the cables inside the wall during the camera installation, leaving no part exposed to the element. The Unified G4 Pro is an outdoor rated 4K night vision camera with 109 degrees field of view, capable of providing full coverage of its entire backyard and front driveway with a single unit each. It's also PoE powered, so the Unified 24 port switch supplies both data and power through a single cable. The camera is rated for negative 20 to 50 degrees Celsius. Living in Canada, we see temperatures as low as negative 35 to negative 40 degrees, but I've never had issues with these cameras operating in these conditions. For the doorbell, we opted for wireless connectivity until it gets wiring there when it starts developing its basement. Other installation is complete. Time to configure the software, the Unify Network Controller, and the Unify Protect. Using the mobile app, we connected to the UDM Pro VI Bluetooth, making its initial configuration easy even without being on the same network. For the network configuration, here's how I set up my brother's network. I created three separate networks, IoT, Guest, and Main. The IoT network is for untrusted smart home devices like TVs and robot vacuums. The guest network is for visitors, and the main network is for trusted devices like phones and laptops. Each network has its own subnet. You can use the default guest option in the Unified platform for the guest network. If you'd like to see the full configuration steps for the Unified switches, Dream Machine, and wireless access points, let me know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech content.